For the next few problems, we'll be talking about graphing secant and cosecant. So to start off with, we for this example we want to graph cos uh, sorry, we want to graph secant based on the graph of cosine. Okay, so starting off here, this is our graph of cosine, just drawn from negative pi to 2 pi. So with this in mind, what do we know about the graph of secant from this? Well, we know the graph of secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So if we just start looking at some key points here, for instance, this point, pi over 2 comma 0, what happens when we take the reciprocal of this 0? Well, the reciprocal of 0, if we write it over here, if we take 0 and put it over 1, remember you can put any number over 1 and it won't change it, the reciprocal of this is going to be 1 divided by 0. And anything divided by 0 is undefined. It's impossible to divide by 0. So, that means there's a vertical asymptote for the graph of secant based on this point on the graph of cosine. And likewise, anywhere that y equals 0, we will have another vertical asymptote. Okay, so this gives us a good starting point on our graph of secant. We have these vertical asymptotes. And now from here, what about when y equals 1? What's the reciprocal of 1? So at this point, 0, 1, if we take the reciprocal of 1, we still get 1. So this point will not change. And likewise, this point at negative 1 will still have a value of negative 1 for its y value. The reciprocal of negative 1 is still negative 1. And finally, this point, the reciprocal of 1, is also 1, and here the reciprocal of negative 1 is again negative 1. Okay, and now finally continuing on from here, if we take this point, for instance, where cosine equals, cosine of this angle equals 1 half, for instance, what's the reciprocal of 1 half? Well, it's 2. So this point will flip up here. And likewise, where cosine equals 1 half here, it will flip up here. Secant will have a reciprocal. Secant's value will be 2 because it's re, it is the reciprocal. And likewise, what about when the graph hits y equals 1 tenth here? Then secant's value is the reciprocal of 1 tenth. It's going to become... 10. And here, when it's 1 tenth, it becomes 10. Can you tell what this shape looks like? It resembles a parabola. It is not a parabola. Don't, don't confuse this. But it has the general shape of a parabola. It has a U shape to it. And the same thing will happen here. All of these negative values, negative one-half, negative one-tenth, when you take the reciprocal will become negative two, negative ten. You'll get another shape like this. And finally over here, we only have half of the parabola that we're working with because we are stopping the graph at 2 pi, so we only draw half of our parabola like so, the side that's shown. And over here, again, we only have half the parabola, so again, we only draw this half. This is more than one period of secant. So just to be clear, if we wanted just one standard period of secant, I'll go ahead and highlight this in blue. It would be from this part of the graph till 2 pi, 
from 0 to 2 pi, one period of secant looks like this. And we have these vertical asymptotes in between the blue parts of the graph. Okay, so this just gave us a rough idea of how to quickly get our graph of secant. All we have to do is graph cosine and then take the reciprocal of everything. And it turns out that that method is also going to work when we have transformations applied to cosine. We'll just graph cosine and apply the reciprocal and then apply the transformations. So one quick note before we move on to cosecant is a fact that says secant is an even function. Remember even means you can fold the graph like a, a mirror or a piece of paper. If you fold it over on the y-axis, this vertical axis, if you fold it over, you'll get an exact copy of what you started with. So notice if we were to fold this over, this side of this parabola shape would fold over to this side, this parabola shape would fold over onto this one, and likewise, we'd have an exact copy on the right side of the y-axis as we do on the left side. So, very quickly, we'll go ahead and do the same thing for cosecant. Now that we understand the method, we can go through it a lot faster. Everywhere that y equals 0, remember that means we have a vertical asymptote. And for this graph, I'm just going to be graphing from 0 to 2 pi. I wanted to graph secant. Uh, from more than 0 to 2 pi because it's a little bit hard to see its shape if we just, going back to this, if we just graph from 0 to 2 pi, it's a bit odd to see the actual shape. But when you have this entire graph here from negative pi to 2 pi, it's easier to see all the parabolas that keep coming up. So with that in mind, Back to this, we only need to graph from 0 to 2 pi to see the shape that appears for cosecant. Okay, so continuing on from here, remember wherever y equals 1 or negative 1, that point will stay the same on cosecant when you take the reciprocal. And finally, whenever we have a hill, that means we're going to have this upward-facing parabola shape. And whenever we have a valley, we'll have a downward-facing parabola shape. And this is the graph of one period of cosecant. A vertical asymptote, a parabola shape, vertical asymptote, parabola shape, vertical asymptote. And in this case, it turns out that cosecant is an odd function. Remember, that means it's symmetric to the origin. If you flip your paper upside down, you'll get the exact same drawing you had before. Okay, so continuing on from here, we'll make note of our process that says to graph A times cosecant of Bx plus C all plus D, or A times secant of Bx plus C plus D, the first step is to graph the reciprocal function without vertical transformations. So basically apply the vertical transformations after you deal with your uh, taking the reciprocal, but we'll get to that in a moment. The basic idea here is just graph sine and cosine like we've done in the past with the transfer, uh, sorry, not the transformations like we've done in the past with uh, setting the period from 0 to 2 pi, solving for it, making the table, listing the transformations. It's all the same, except once you get your graph down, you don't apply the transformations immediately. Okay, now from there, we're going to put vertical asymptotes where y equals 0, or the x-intercepts. 
So that's just like we did in the last two examples. We will then draw an upward facing parabola shape at the hills or the maxes. And at the minimums or the valleys, we will draw a downward facing parabola shape. Again, steps two, 3a and 3b are exactly what we've been doing in the last two problems. And now, once we get all of that done, we can apply the vertical transformations.